Hello YouTube, and welcome to my toughest ranking video ever, and probably will be the toughest I'll ever do. Today we are taking a peek at... Ah, <sighs> Gao's Rages. We have a lot to go over before we start this list, however, so pay attention. I have ranked them by, not number, but by tier. And these tiers aren't really ordered within the tier until B tier. We're gonna have S at the top, A, B, C, D, and F. Most of these are gonna be compiled into F and D, and a good chunk are in also C, and the remainder's in B, A, and S. The reason that there's so many in F, D, and C is because really, a lot of them are just not that good. You're gonna see colors, and they'll put chapters in the video for each rank. As far as where each enemy is within a tier, unless we're like halfway up B or higher, I put very little effort into actually ranking them because, again, it doesn't really matter. I'm willing to have a discussion in the comments about why a rage should go up or down a tier, but as far as where it goes in a tier, because it's really down to personal preference. If you say anything, it should be up a couple of spots in A or down a couple of spots in B. I'm probably not going to talk about it, but if you say why something should go up into A or down into B, I'm good with that. This puts us into our next point, Gao setups. Things like Wind God Gao won't be considered in the list as it's not available in every version of the game. So we will be looking at the rages themselves and how they will help the party or just deal stuff in battle at face value. There won't be a lot of moving parts to this video because honestly, compiling all the information and stills for this video was tiring enough as it is. I do apologize for that, but if I went for video style, this thing would never get finished. We have a lot of information on every single section as well, so let's take a look at what we got. First, you'll see the enemy name in the top left. Besides that, is the weapon that they use, which is very consistent as far as the style goes. If they're going to be using Knuckles, it's going to be Dragon Knuckles. If it's a rod, it's always going to be an Ice Rod. That being said, we don't have Ice Rod effects or Ice Elemental on the rods. It just so happens to be the weapon that the developers gave each Rage. Going into this, you should also know that every turn that Gao has, it's a 50-50 shot if he uses the physical attack or the enemy skill. So spells like Slogo won't be super useful after the first turn. I'm going to kind of contradict myself for one of the top three rages, but I'm perfectly okay with that. In the next slot is Resistances and Weaknesses. If you see W, it means weak, A is Absorb, and I is Immune. The rest is just each element and I'll put them all on the screen here. After that, you'll have certain attributes from each enemy, such as having float, being undead, being human, having protect, or one of my favorites, death at zero MP. Most are pretty cut and dry, so we'll just leave it there. After that, we have all the status resistances, which can be pretty helpful depending on your needs. Mostly they're just nice to have, but good to know nonetheless. After that comes our quote unquote accessibility ranking. I broke this down into six different times that we would go and get rages. We will have our first trip to the Velt when we first get Gao. The next time won't be until after we get the airship. We're gonna call this. We are gonna call this post MTech. After that, we won't do another Velt trip until pre floating continent, where the continent is up in the air, but we haven't gone there yet. Next will be when we get the airship in World of Ruin, which includes the IAF and the floating continent. After that, anything you get outside of Kefka's Tower will be considered World of Ruin questing. And finally, if you go into Kefka's Tower, I do realize you could dive early for rages, but for this list we will only consider it as a final dungeon and you're only going there as the final dungeon. The less you can use the rage, obviously the less useful it will be. There is some consideration for low level and challenge runs, but it's not heavily weighted towards them. Finally we have the rank, which was more for me when we were initially laying it all out, but it's still there just to double check the work. So we have now broken up the chart and what we will be looking at and all that that's going to entail. How the pieces of all that work, such as how we will be accessing the rages. There might be a few boo-boos here and there as being able to get a rage a bit earlier or something to that effect. Feel free to let me know what's incorrect just so that future watchers can see it in the comments. This is a tough list to make so go a little bit easy on me. Feel free to hit that subscribe button for much shorter and probably more fun lists. This was a meme that took much longer than I could have possibly anticipated. And honestly, I followed through with it mostly because I was already halfway done. Big props to my good friend Dai Nuatari for helping me out filling out the spreadsheet and his constant help and information he knows helping me out through these lists. Okay, starting off our list, we're going to start with some that you can't even get. Here we have Siegfried. He, uh, kind of sucks all around. You can't use Flare, but again, you can't use him in any version. So that makes him pretty bad. 
Then next we have Typhon, who, even though you can fight him throughout the game, he also got dummied out. So that's another rage you cannot use. Carrying on, we have the three Tonberries uh, found in a chest. Uh, they will use Knife, which is supposed to be a pretty good spell. You can't get them in any of the versions. Actually, correction, you can get them in the Game Boy Advance. However, you can't use it. Then we have another chest boss, the Death Warden. Uh, only available in the GBA, so that's why he's getting knocked pretty hard. He does teach Quake, which isn't terrible. You also get him pretty late, which kind of is terrible. Now to the ones that we should be able to use. Those are all the ones that we couldn't use before. Now we have Cherry, found in Kefka's Tower. We're gonna hit a string of Kefka's Towers here because we didn't order any of these. Cherry, she teaches Holy. She's also in Kefka's Tower. It's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of effort to go and get Holy, so we're not gonna. Vector Lithos, also Kefka's Tower. Uh, he does teach White Wind, carrying on. We have the Vector Chimera, who, despite the fact that he is also in Kefka's Tower, teaches Aqua Breath. I mean, it's not like we have someone else who can't use Aqua Breath, so that's cool. We have the Primeval Dragon, who also uses Faraga. Cool, if only we had Tritok or something that we could find so much sooner than getting to one of these guys. The Outsider, also Kafka's Tower, also uses Holy. I believe he's also in one of the encounters with the Cherry, now that I think about it, so you're getting Holy one way or the other if you wanted to look for these. If only there was a better way to get them. Then we have the Landworm. Kefka's Tower does teach Magnitude 8. We also get this ability in one of the much, much higher, much, much earlier ranks, I do believe. Also, look at that. Pretty much no resistances. No status resistances either. Kefka's Tower Junk, who teaches Transfusion. Oh, baby, I can't wait for Gow to just randomly kill himself. Now we have the Great Behemoth. Hey, these guys are pretty tough. They're pretty good. What do they teach? Meteor. Hey, that's actually not too bad. Unfortunately, you have to get all the frickin' way here to actually get it. Carrying on. The Gamma. He's a pretty tough looking dude. What does he teach us? Discord? Cool. Either he's gonna punch something with his fist, or he's gonna make their levels go in half. That's amazing. I guess he does get weak to lightning and water. That's cool, I suppose. Oh, Fortis. What a nice guy you are. Teaches Fireball. Actually not terrible of his move, but again, there's absolutely no reason why you'd want to go all this way just to get Fireball. It's, it's way too late in the game. We have the dual armor. Kefka's Tower once again. Teaches Megavolt. We get that way later on, but hey, at least he's weak to lightning and water, so that's cool. The Demon Knight. Look at all those arms. What does this boy give us? Shockwave. Actually not terrible. That being said, I don't think you're gonna get a stupid amount of use out of it anyways, and there's so many better things that we could do at this point that it's whatever. Wizard. Look at this boy. You can find him in the Narsh Cave. He will teach Hang on to this, gravity. Wow. The Were Dragon. You can find him in Dreamscape. What does this big boy teach us? Death? Cool. That's it. That's all. Just cool. Next, we have the Wart Puck. This guy is found in Zone Eater. He teaches Rasp. Wow. So we're not actually going to do damage, but we can sure make things lose lose MP. That's pretty cool. Huh? Yeah, that's, that's pretty tempting. You have to get to all the way to World Ruin to learn Rasp. It's not like Shiva teaches that early on or something. Carrying on. Here we have Zach, Zach McKeel. Zaz Mac Hang on. Zach McKeel. Zach McKeel. I never would have freaking guessed that. Zach McKeel. He is found in the Narsh Caves. What does this guy teach us? He teaches us Imp. Cool. Now here's the regular Tomberry. Uh, this is a different encounter from the three Tomberries. This guy is found when you are going through Umaro's cave. Uh, he teaches Break. That's cool. Also, for some reason, he uses a katana, which, if you look at Tomberry, he very much doesn't. But for some reason, Gao does, and I just thought that was interesting to, uh, to look at. Here we have Sorath. He will teach us Caven, which is fractional damage, which is funny because you will find him in a cave. The cave where you go and fight hide on. So that's apt. Then we have the Pluto armor, also found in Dreamscape. He gives us Magitek laser, which, I mean, is cool. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but it's cool. And here we have Pandora, found in Dreamscape. What he teaches is Revenge Blast. So I guess if you're really lucky and you keep Gao at lower HP and he has a lot of HP, 
I guess he'll kind of start doing meaningful damage. That's a that's a possible thing. The Medusa Chicken. You'll find this thing also in Hydon's Cave. I completely forget what it's actually called. We're calling it Hydon's Cave from now on. He will also teach you Beak. No, that's not Beak. Let's try Break. That was supposed to be a joke about the chicken and its beak, by the way, but I feel like that didn't really hit, so I just had to explain it. Everybody knows that a joke is a whole lot better when you actually explain it, so carry it on. Here we have the Figaro Lizard. You want to take a guess where you find this? If you guessed Figaro, that is crazy. You do, by the way. And he teaches, you guessed it, Discord. Now we have phase. I mean, I mean face. Face. It's face, face. Uh, this is found in the Phoenix Cave, and he will teach you a thousand needles. So boy, I sure can't wait to get to World of Ruin so that I can have a 50-50 chance of maybe using a move that'll do a thousand damage. That's pretty cool. Maybe a low-level run would be kind of worth it, but there's probably also a whole lot of other options that are a whole lot better, so moving on. We have Gloomwind. Gloomwind is going to be found just on the overworld down on the Thamasa Island, and he will teach Net, which means you can stop something, I guess, if it's able to be stopped. The Desert Hare. This is found just outside of South Figaro, and this is also in the World of Ruin, as you can tell by the map, and he will teach Kira which is kind of cute. He's weak to water, so maybe it's because he's so dried out or something. I don't know, but he's weak to water. Uh, not particularly useful at this point, but I mean, none of these are. None of these are going to be useful. They're all F rank. Here we have Crusher. You will find him in Owser's Mansion. Uh, teaches Life Shaver, which I guess is fine. Don't really know why you'd want that to be your random attack, but there you go. Now this grotesque thing is called Creature. You'll find him in Hydon's Cave as well. He will teach you, wow, Life Shaver, just like the thing before. Fun fact, Life Shaver is Earth Elemental. The Blade Dancer, also found in Owser's Castle. The Blade Dancer, which is also found in Owser's Mansion. What does she give us? She gives us Osmos, which I guess is maybe a little better than rasp it, it gives you mp back instead of just killing the mp for a little bit less than what it would actually do but you know it's it is what it is the basilisk this bro will be hiding around the narsha area in the world of ruin uh he will also teach you break which is good because he is immune to petrify cannon armored weapon you find this bad boy also in the Fogaro Castle. And what beautiful thing does he teach us? Gravity Bomb. Gee, I sure do love me some fractional damage. The Alluring Rider. Despite the fact that she's not wearing pants, you can find her in Dreamscape, and she will teach you Doom. This is a lesson to believe that anytime you see a chick riding a green-looking warthog thing in a Dreamscape area, it will be your Doom. Ugh. And now we got the Nightwalker. This is a chest fight that you will find in the crumbling house where Sabin is holding it up, and it teaches you Drain, which is funny because it's undead, which, if I, my calculations are correct, will hurt you. I might be wrong on this because I I never use this, but it makes sense. Luna Wolf. You will find this thing just walking around the world, just around the Kefka Tower area. Uh, he will use a move called Face Chomp, which most of the time when you have a physical attack like this, it either does like one and a half, maybe two times damage. There's a few later on that do quite a bit of damage, but for the most part, I'm just going to make the assumption they do one and a half to two times damage. I didn't look up every single one because this is way too far in to even care about something like that anyways when we have way better options early on. Exo Ray. This is an undead flower that you can find in Daryl's tomb. What does it teach us? Venom Mist which is actually kind of an interesting move. So what Venomous does is it just does poison elemental damage and inflicts poison on all the targets. It has a spell power 20, so it's pretty weak. The hit rate is 80, which isn't terrible, but it does also get inverted against undead targets. So maybe don't use this against undead targets unless you want to give them essentially a regen. Next, we have the dropper. These guys all kind of have a bit of a, a lame looking sprite. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you'll also find this in the Figaro Castle and he teaches Ooh, confuse. Cool. And because he's a machine, he's also going to be weak to lightning and water. Something to note. Here we have the... Oh, goodness me. Devoahan. I'm sure. Uh, you'll find him just walking around the deserts just when you uh, start walking around with Celeste and Sabin, just south of Nikia. He lets you use Sloga, which isn't horrible. It's kind of situational, so I guess it's not like the worst thing in the world, but I feel like there's just a lot of better options. The Crawler. This guy is also in Figaro Castle. He will teach you Sticky Goo, which is essentially a slow on one target, and that is it. So he's either going to punch something or use Sticky Goo. It's funny that those are his options because this thing is actually really scary when you're first coming through with his Fire 2s and his muddled 
type attack. It's crazy. And here we have Cancer, found in the Figaro Desert, World of Ruin. Uh, considering the fact that he's called Cancer, he will actually heal you, which I just realized now is kind of ironic. The Devourer. We're back into World of Balance now. You will find him just in the Thamasa area, and he will teach you Shell Slam. It just does physical damage of one and a half times. The Blood Fang, found just north of Jador, just south of Zozo. He has a move called Drain. We've already talked about this one. It'll heal you. Also kind of funny that he's an enemy that uses Dragon Claw. It actually makes sense with the claws. Side note, I really like what they do with all the weapons and stuff throughout this. It kind of makes sense for some of them. Some of them are kind of weird. The Actinian. What does this guy give us? By golly, he gives us Clamp, which, believe it or not, is one and a half times damage, unless you get it from the Sand Horse. But we'll get to that when we get to it. Then we got Trapper, found in Vector. Well, Magitech Factory, to be more precise, teaches us level 3 Confuse, which we have already realized is not that helpful if you've watched the Struggle Door video. Stunners, found in our dear friend the Opera. What does he give us? Incisors. Another one and a half times damage physically, so it is what it is. When you go through Magitech Factory, you'll, teach these, or you'll find these little guys called Onion Knights. They will teach Imp, which is kind of blah. Then we have the Goishas. These are also in the opera. And they will teach you, oh baby, Libra. I sure love me having a scan attack with one of my 50-50 chances. That won't get old by turn number three or four. Yo, it's my boy, Dawn, though. He's found just around the Imperial base. And this is the Imperial base where you get all the items, not the Imperial base that's actually a camp that you find in Sabbath Scenario. There is a difference, and I always get them mixed up. Uh, he teaches Tackle. When you believe it, it's another one and a half times damage, unless you get it from a Yeti. But, and it's Tackle, which teaches us... Tackle is a one and a half times physical damage as well. It just is what it is. Urok. This is found right at the beginning of the game, as you're walking through South Figaro Castle. Urok. This is found at the beginning of the game. You can find him in South Figaro Cave. He teaches Digestive Fluid. It's just a sap, and that's all it is. Not terrible early game, but eh. Now here we got the Sandre found in the Figaro Desert, World of Balance, as you can tell from the map. He will teach us Hail. And you want to take a guess what Tail does? If you guessed one and a half times damage, by golly you guessed right. Poplium found in the Phantom Forest. This dear boy teaches us Kling, which should just be a slow. Now we have the Moo. This is found pretty early game as well. You will find him. You will find him just outside of the South Figaro Cave, and he will teach Snare, which, as we've seen from the dance video, which we also have a Mog dance video, he will just try to insta death something. It kind of works sometimes. Then we got the Doberman found on the Lock scenario. You will find him in the basement of the rich person's house as you're trying to leave South Figaro. He will use bite it only does a one and a half times damage with the doberman then we find the bandit you will find him in the narsh caves world of balance he teaches self-destruct pretty early to have a self-destruct going on but you know it is what it is and there is our f rank that's uh we're gonna be hitting this pretty hard pretty fast and all of these suck because they're kind of useless we either get them too late or they just kind of really have no general purposes they don't have a lot of protections they don't have a lot of status element protections it just kind of is what it is. Up next is the D rank. Welcome to the D rank. There's gonna be a lot in here. There really isn't a huge change between the D and the F rank other than I just kind of wanted to change it up a little bit. All in all, they all kind of suck anyways. And again, we're just gonna start from basically the hardest to get to the best to get, because I haven't ranked any of these either, because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. So here we're gonna have the Ariman, Kafka's Tower. What does this boy teach us? Roulette. So you have like a 50-50 chance to have a chance to die. That's pretty cool. The Mud Sud. Not only is this a rare encounter to get inside Kefka's Tower, he will teach Snowstorm, which I guess is cool. Wouldn't be one of my best things to use at this point in time, but it's there. The Mover. These guys are tiny. They're tiny. They're kind of tough to find. And they will teach Meltdown. Actually not a bad move. You need to be kind of set up for it, so if you don't have your party set up for the Meltdown, Gal could just potentially kill you and all the enemies, so that's a thing to look out for. The Metal Hitman, also found in Kefka's Tower, teaches Discord. Again, cool. The Innocent, these guys are a bunch of dicks, by the way. Uh, Kefka's Tower will teach Venomist, which we learned is interesting. It's an interesting move at the very least. Great Malboro, found in Kefka's Tower once again. This guy will just teach you Bio, which we will have had for quite some time. 
Then the Fiend Dragon. Too bad Gal doesn't get to look like these enemies. That Just looking at this guy now makes me think it'd be cool if he turned into them as well. Okay, this thing teaches Northern Cross. I'm going to read this verbatim because I don't actually completely understand it, but here it is. It inflicts Frozen on all targets and is considered an Ice Elemental spell, but does not deal any damage. The ability does not remove invisible status when it fails to inflict Frozen. It has a hit rate of 90 and is vulnerable to Runic. Cool, this move is runicable. I'm learning something. Here we have the Death Machine. What does the Death Machine teach us? Death. Sounds about right. Carry it on. Dark Force. This guy knows like all of the blue magic spells. What is he gonna give us? Tsunami. Actually not a terrible way if you wanna not sit there and try and learn Tsunami off of him. You could learn Tsunami off of the Rage and you have like a 50-50 shot every time Gao goes for a turn. So that's a possibility for making it useful, but meh. Here we have the Daedalus. This guy likes to use a lot of poison and stuff. What is he gonna use? Meltdown. Sure. Why not? Zaviak. This is found in the Phoenix Cave. And he gives us Flash Rain. It's actually one of the small times that we actually get to use Flash Rain, which is ice and water and has a spell power of 60, and it hits with 140, which means it hits pretty often. That being said, it's not a particularly strong spell, but it's at least cool to know that we have access to it at some point after me figuring out that Strago had no access to Flash Rain. This is turning into more of a rant video than anything else. Suriander, found in Dreamscape. What does this big boy give us? Aqua Breath. Yeah, looking at him, that's that's probably more of a green aqua breath than a blue one, but you know what I mean. Still life. You will find this thing in Owser's mansion. I still am not sure. Are those green things the lips? And if so, why? This thing teaches us lullaby, which could be useful. It inflicts sleep to a single target, so you could also just use sleep. The hit rate is 90. I'm not entirely sure what the hit rate is on, on regular sleep because I'd never bother to use it because I'd rather just hit stuff. Shambling Corpse, found in the Zone Eater. What does this boy give us? Thundaga. So I guess if you were doing a natural magic run, this is a way to get one of your tier 3 spells, but other than that, meh. Sea Flower, back in Phoenix Cave. That guy will give us sleep. Oh baby. So you either have a chance to put something to sleep or punch it and make it not go to sleep anymore. Raflesia. This guy is found in Owser's Mansion as well. And he uses Entice, which is better than Lullaby. Uh, it causes a special status ailment that works like Confuse, only there's no visual proof of it. It has a hit rate of 80 and affected by the silent status. The status, the status ailment is unique in that it only dissipates after either the caster or the target has died. And there is no way to prevent it. So it's kind of like Unbreakable Confuse unless by death. Then we got the Punisher. He is found in Zozo, the World of Ruin version. I think that's actually on the cave that he's found, but another way to get Thundaga, if you so feel the need to. Then we have the Psychos, found in the Narsh Snowfields. What does this boy give us? He gives us Life Shaver. Already, I'm not a huge fan of Life Shaver, but you know, it is what it is. The Necromancer, Phoenix Cave. What sort of great spell does he give us? Death. Why would a Necromancer use Death? I guess so that he can Necromance you, I suppose. Is that even how you use that term? I don't know. Then you get the Neck Hunter, South Fagaro Cave. This guy's gonna give us another Imp. He does start with haste, so like that's cool, I guess. The Slag Worm, found in the Miranda Desert. This boy uses Sandstorm, which is just a wind elemental damage of spell power 45, and it ignores split damage. Not particularly that strong, but I guess if you really wanted a wind elemental, there it is. Then we have the Mugbear, also found in the Zozo Mountain. He teaches Net. Why does he teach Net? Frick if I know. Mahadeva. What a name. This guy is found in Hydon's cave. And he will also teach you death. Why is everything using death? I didn't realize this was such a death-centric section here. We have one of the four Magna Rotors. There's four of them. They're all called Magna Rotors, and we have to go by their color. So this is Magna Rotor Yellow, found in the world of ruin Narsh Caves. He will use haste, which is not terrible. You'll probably have haste by this point anyways, but there you go. Leap Frogs, found in the Miranda Desert. This guy will use Sticky Goo, which we have figured out is just a slow. Yippee Kaye. Now we have the Magna Rotor Brown. This guy will teach level four flare, so it's actually not horrendous, but it, that's extremely situational to be like, oh wait, these guys are level four. Oh wait, I can use this rage. Oh, I sure hope that the 50-50 rolls that he uses level four flare at least once or twice. Then we have the the light Lyceon? Lyceon? I'm gonna go with Lyceon. We'll, we'll go with that. Why not? He teaches Blaster. 
Uh, it inflicts death to one or all targets with a hit rate of 70, but will always hit a stopped target. And it fails on targets immune to death. It is also runicable. So that's cool. So what you'd have to do for this to be worth it is have Gao use the rage, have someone use stop, have that thing be immune to stop and death, and then it will. Uh, this will be a useful rage. It seems like a lot of steps when you could just vanish Doom if you really wanted to go about it that way. But here we are. Hang on, would this setup work on at least the SNES Poltergeist? Probably not, because he should be immune to death, but he is not immune to stop. I may need to test this one day. Holy Dragon. Anyone want to take a huge guess as to what Holy Dragon will teach us? This is the only dragon that we fight out of the eight that actually ends up becoming a rage that you can find. Oh golly, he teaches us holy. That's amazing. The Greater Mantis. This boy is found also in the Miranda Forest and surrounding area. He gives off Wind Slash. Which, just another wind elemental spell, spell power of 48, and it ignores split damage and is unblockable. Which, if it's 48, that means it is 3 spell power stronger than Sandstorm. Fun little fact. Lace Lebolus. He is found in Mount Zozo as well. And he will teach Revenge Blast. Yeah, he looks like a guy who would do that. Garm, found in the Narsh Snow Fields. He will use Body Slam. Of all the things that this guy could use, that would not be one of the ones that I think he would use. But that's just another one and a half times physical attack anyways. Man, these names are atrocious, by the way. Galib... Galibdus? Sure, why not? He will teach Cyclonic, which, I mean, it's a really sick name at the very least. Sounds very detrimental to your health. Um, it actually just reduces all targets HP to 1 16th of their total. It has a hit rate of 75 and doesn't hit targets immune to death. So basically it is, brings people down to near death and that's all it really does. And if something is immune to death, it's not going to hit. Devil Fist, found also in Mount Zozo. He will use Will-O-Wisp, which is a pretty decent little spell, but it's a pretty decent Decent little fire spell, spell power of 72, but we can do better than that. The Delta Beetle, you'll find him just wandering around the the broken kind of middle continent. I don't even know what this continent's really called, but it's between Mobles and the Fanatics Cave. And he will teach Megavolt. Again, we can get this so much earlier, and he doesn't really have any, he doesn't have any resistances. He's just weak to fire. The Deep Eye, found just outside of Holingen where you get Setzer. Uh, he teaches Dread Gaze, which, if my memory serves correct, is just a petrification attack. Hit rate of 75, so that's a thing. Covert, these guys are actually kind of nasty if you just find them. Uh, he's found in the Zone Eater, and he only gives you Wind Slash, so the only reason the Wind Slash thing would be worth it is for Wind Slash Gao, but there's, there's better ones that we can use for like resistances and stuff if you really wanted to go into it, so that is what it is. We have the Coral Cat. He will also teach Blaster. What is it with these cats and just using insta-death attacks? It says something about cats if you really think about it. The Clymenus, found in the Phoenix Cave, will teach Fyra. That's a long ways to go to learn a tier 2 spell. Yeah, that's pretty much all that's really interesting about it, to be honest. The Chaos Dragon, also found in Phoenix Cave. He will teach Disaster, which is kind of an interesting thing. It inflicts Blind, Imp, Doom, Silence, Confuse, and Float to one or all targets with a hit rate of 62, so kinda low, and also runicable. So it's kind of like bad breath, really. Cactuar, everyone loves our little boy Cactuar dancing around, and you know what he's gonna give us? If you guess 1,000 needles, by golly, you must be a prophet. Then on the floating continent, we're gonna find Dragon. Dragon will use Revenge Blast. So again, you better hope that Gao has a lot of HP and he's getting pretty fricked up if you want this thing to do any meaningful damage. Dante is found in the Figaro Castle basement and he will use level three Confuse. Ergo, pretty useless. Brachiosaur, everyone likes to grind on this guy. That was taken in the wrong context. Found in the Dino Forest and he will also use Disaster, which we've already gone over. Lots of status protection, but that's pretty much it. Not worth getting. Amducius. We'll go with that. Amducius teaches Sloga. We will have other stuff that teaches Sloga, and that's pretty much the only thing that's worth mentioning on this thing. Paraladia! This thing is found outside of Kolingan in the World of Balance, and it will use Poison Touch. You wanna guess what Poison Touch does? If you guessed, if you guessed that it inflicts poison to one target, you're getting an A on this test. By golly. Fasig Fasigiata. Holy moly, what are with these names? Uh, found just outside Kolingan in the World of Balance. Uh, we'll also use Cyclonic, which is that 1 16th Wind Elemental spell. 
the Vampire Thorn. This thing is found just wandering the overworld, kind of close to where Mobless is, World of Ruin, and it will use Bio Sky Armor from our good friend IAF. We'll just teach you Magitek Laser, so you can get it earlier, but that it is what it is. And here we have Skeletal Horror. He is found in Daryl's tomb. What does he use? He uses Banish. Or if you're a SNES nerd like me, that's Exone and not an actual enemy attack. I found this out on my third take. Scorpion. This guy is found in Tizen when the house is crumbling down. And he will cast Poison. Wow, amazing. The Sand Horse. This is found in the Figaro Desert, and he uses Sandstorm. Too bad he doesn't use that physical move that we were talking about, because that does a whole lot more damage than the other time. Zaka, also found in Tizen Crumbling House, and he will use Net. Wow, a lot of these really frickin' suck, I'm not gonna lie. Outcast, found in the Sealed Cave. This should give us something pretty cool. Nope, Life Shaver. It does have a couple of absorbs, at least, with Fire and Poison, so that's something, at least. Here we have the, the Moose. The mouse? Eh, it depends what you want to call it by. Also found just outside Kolingan, World of Ruin. And it will use Transfusion. Cool. Gal can just die. Misfits found on Floating Continent. What is this guy going to give us? Life Shaver. Boy, he sure looks like his buddy the Outcast, doesn't he? I'm almost starting to sense a bit of a pattern here. Lizard found between Mobles and the Fanatic's K Tower. Found between Mobles and the Fanatic's Tower in the World of Ruin. He's going to use Break. Looks a lot like that Basilisk, if you ask me. Humpty! Look at this boy. As much as I don't love this dude, I love this dude. He's found in the Figaro basement. He will teach poison. You know what? I don't love this dude no more. Crawler. You will see him walking around the continent north of... You'll find this guy walking on the continent north of where Doma Castle is in the World of Ruin. And he will use Traveler. I hope you've been getting your steps in. Bogey, my boy, Bogey. I like the doggy boys. Uh, you'll find him, again, just outside of Kolingan, and he will use Growl. Uh, this isn't Pokemon. Growl actually is a physical attack that just does times two damage. The Apocrypha. This is found on Floating Continent, and he will use level three Confuse. Not very good if you ask me. Now we have the Skyfire's counterpart, the Spitfire. Hopefully this guy is a whole lot better. What does he give us? He gives us Magitek Laser. Literally the same thing. Amazing. You also don't get float off of this guy, so that's cool. Platinum Dragon, found on the Floating Continent. He gives us Cyclonic, again. Cool, a lot of these guys give Cyclonic, that's cool. Imperial Elite, this guy is found in the, this guy's one of the guys that you fight in Vector, and he uses Protect, so that's not horrendous. At least something that kind of helps your party out a little bit. Zombie Dragon, you'll find this guy in the Sealed Cave, and he uses Doom. So something that actually kind of hits a little bit more. Sure, things are going to take forever to die because you have to have that counter go down, but at least it's something. The Provoker, also found in the Sealed Cave. He will cast Imp for some freaking reason. I don't think it's even in their scripting to use Imp. I might be wrong. I never let them actually go through that far, but it seems a little bit weird. The Marusu. This guy is found just to the west of the southern continent in the World of Ruin, and he will use Stop. So that's kind of cool, I guess? Lich, another boy from the Sealed Cave. He uses just fire, which is kind of lame, considering that this guy's scripting literally is fire one, fire two, and then he just starts chucking out fire threes like it's nobody's business. Kind of lame. Langrillion. He is just on the mountain by Thamasa, and this boy will use Wing Snap, which essentially is just inflicting a berserk on something. That's all it really does. But it's kind of like berserk on the enemy, I suppose. In Tangier, oh boy. This guy's a really tough one, everyone likes to grind on him. What amazing thing does he give us? Transfusion. Oh good, another way for Gao to die. Hey, but at least it has haste so Gao can die faster. Chimera, also found on the Thamasa continent. He will use Aqua Breath. He has a lot of resistances to status ailments, but that's pretty much all that's special about him. Bonacon, also found in the cave or mountain by Thamasa. And he will use Sticky Goo. We've already learned we don't like Sticky Goo. Balloon, found in the burning house. And he will use Self-Destruct. Cool, another way for Gao to die. Adamankari, sure hope I said that right. Also found on Thamasa Island. He will use Acid Rain, which you will see something like the train use in the Savage scenario. Acid Rain just deals poison water, dual elemental damage, and it inflicts sap on all the enemies. The damage is also inverted on undead targets with a spell power 25 and a hit rate of 100. It also ignores split damage with a spell power 25. Gee, I sure hope it ignores split damage. The Vulture, you will find on your way down to the Opera House. 
This boy will use Shamshir, which is just a... Shamshir just hits the opponent for 50% of their HP. It may or may not hit. Beno Benu. You'll find this guy also on the Thamasa Mountain. And he will use Poison. Kind of lame. The Veil Dancer, found in Zozo on the way inside all the buildings. And she will use Blizzara. Kind of an early way to get Blizzara, but... She's kind of an early way to get Blizzara. We have a few better on along the way. But she's also human, which means she doesn't really get anything, but she is going to be weak to poison. Sergeant. This boy is found also in Vector, and he will just cast Reflect because he really just doesn't want to get hit by spells. He hears that these Returner people are walking around learning spells. He doesn't want to get hit by them. Rock Wasp. Also found on the way to the Opera House, and he will use Sleep Sting. Anyone want to take a guess what Sleep Sting will do? It inflicts sleep. GG's. Mandrake. Oh boy, Mandrake. Also found on Thamasa Island. And he will use Leech. Leech just absorbs HP from one target with a spell power of 40 and a hit rate of 100. Again, the damage is inverted on Undead because that's just how Undeads work. The Magna Rotor Red. This guy will use Silence. And he's weak to ice. So that's pretty cool. A lot of things. It feels like a lot of things cast ice in this game. He does start with haste though. Joker just found outside of Vector. He will give you Thundara. Kind of a somewhat earlyish way to get Thundara, but we also already have Ramu at this point, so it is what it is. The heavy armor, you can either find him in Lock Scenario in South Figaro, or you'll fight him on the Kefka Narsh section. And he will use Magitek Laser because why wouldn't something that looks like this use Magitek Laser? Gobbledegook! One of probably the most fun names to say in this game. He is found in Zozo, but he's not that fun to use because he'll just cast Invisible on himself. Gee, I sure hope we don't get hit by all the magical spells. The Geigen Toad. You'll find him in the Overworld, just to the west after you crash your little raft. And again, he's another Sticky Goo. He's pretty useless. One of my favorite enemies, you play the game for a whole bunch of hours, and then you run into something in a desert called Bug. Uh, you can find him in the desert just by the Imperial camp. You can also find him way off to the west as well. Uh, he will just cast Stop, so we're not going to be using that one anyways. Belzecu, found inside Magitech Factory. He will teach Gravity. Boy, I sure love me some fractional damage. Wild Rat, found in the Narsh Caves. He will use Scratch, which is just another one and a half times attack spell, so either you're gonna do regular damage or you're gonna do one and a half times damage. And that's just what life is. It's essentially a crit. Valior, this is also found in the Narsh Caves in the one little section after you come back with Terra and company. So he's a little bit stronger and he'll use stone, which I guess if you manage to get Gao at the same level as whatever you're fighting, he'll get that eight times damage on it. So that's pretty cool, I suppose. Nautiloid, this boy is found on the Elite River when we're just going down on the raft. And he will use Ink. If you're using the SNES, doesn't really do a whole lot, considering it only casts Blind and Physical Evasion doesn't exist in that game. In the other versions, I guess if you wanted something to cast Blind on something, this would be one way to go about it. Wouldn't be the way that I'd go about it, but you know, it is a way to go about it. Living Dead, you'll find this guy on the train in the Sabin scenario. He will use Osmos. We don't even have MP at that point in the game, so that's cool, I suppose. Gold Bear, you'll find him on the lock scenario, walking through South Forgaro Cave for the second time. He will use Gouge. Gouge is actually not too terrible of a thing. It does physical attack to one target, and it's level three equals attack times 2.5. So it is a little bit stronger, but again, this is, this is a purely physical build, and we already are gonna get a much better physical build for a whole lot less effort. Commander, you'll find this guy in the South Figaro basement as you're running through with Locke and Celeste. And he will use Break, probably because he's getting overworked so much and he's like, man, I could really just use, ah, uh, Break. Acrofees, also the lock scenario as you're going through South Figaro Cave. He will use Numclaw. I believe this is just a slow or a stop. I couldn't actually find any information on it. I think this is just a stop or a slow that he does. Either way, we don't really care too much about it. Bad Rage. Silver Lobo, you fight this literally in the first couple of minutes of turning on the game. He will use Chomp. Chomp is just a one and a half times damage, essentially a crit. Fun fact, in the Pixel Remaster, sometimes these abilities that are doing one and a half times damage, they can crit for some reason. So that one and a half times damage actually turns into three. Just something to think about. Angel Whisper found on the train as well, Sabin scenario. He will use gravity, which makes sense because he uses gravity 80% of the time. 
And that is it for our D rank. Once we make it through the C and probably the B rank, we actually get to the good ones. B rank actually starts to get a little bit better, but first we have to trudge through the C rank. I don't think I super labeled it out, but some of them might be a little more tiered, as it were. Welcome everyone to the C rank. These things are gonna start getting somewhat useful. They're not terrible. They could be something you wanna use just for fun, but I still rank these as not really particularly good. Anyways, let's get started. The Were Rat, literally found in the first time you go through the Narsh Cave with Terra and the two idiots. He will teach poison. Uh, this is also an initial one that you actually get, so you don't even need to teach Gawit. The Vector Hound, you will find this in Lock Scenario as you're going through the basement. And he will use Bite, which is just another one and a half times damage spells we've talked about before. Tumbleweed. This is actually found in the World of Ruin. I don't know why they give it this background, but it's found in the World of Ruin just by Doma and will use Life Shaver. Not particularly great. The Satellite. You'll find this in a chest in Sabin Scenario as you're going through the Imperial Camp. And he uses Sonic Boom. We haven't actually seen that one yet. Uh, it inflicts damage by 5 eights. It inflicts the target's damage by 5 eights and will inflict Sap as well. So that's interesting. I don't know if it'd be super useful, but it is interesting. The Samurai, found in the Dreamscape. Uh, he will use Lullaby, which I guess is kind of cool. It's that confused that only is broken by death. Then we have Rook, who is found just on the first continent as you land. And he will use Shamshir, which is another just cut the HP by 50% gravity spell. The Onion Dashers found in the World of Ruin in the Narsh Caves. He will use Traveler. So I guess we're back to using some lores again. Oceanus. You want to guess where you find this? Not on the ocean. Actually in the desert. Uh, he will use Magnitude 8, which is kind of interesting. Here we have the Nettle Hopper. You'll find it on the 7 scenario as you're making your way to the waterfall, and he will teach Berserk. He doesn't want to use Wing Snap. He's going to use Berserk. He's not like those other guys, okay? And then we have Misty. She is found in Owser's Mansion. She casts Kira, which is not unhelpful. Megalodoth sounds like a metal band. And you will find him in Narsh as you're originally going through it, and he will use Snowstorm. So he's kind of like our early, early access to Snowstorm, which is why those other Snowstorms are not really that good. He is weak to fire and has like no really resistances, but you know, it is what it is. Magitek Armor, you literally fight this as you're leaving Fergaro's castle for the first time. He's gonna teach you Magitek Laser. The Luridin, this guy has found World of Ruin in the Zozo Mountains, and he will teach Rock Slide. This is non-elemental damage, which is pretty good. It can never be absorbed. It can never be resisted. It is a spell power of 65 and is unblockable, so it's not terrible. Then we have the Lukavi, uh, found in the Narsh Caves in the World of Ruin. He will also use Snowstorm. He has a little bit of protect, and he is immune to doom and death, so he is a little bit better than that Megalodoth as far as that goes, but he is also much, much later in the game. Lenargia, you will find this guy in the Magitek Factory. He will use Shamshir. We don't need more Shamshir, by the way. We're kind of over Shamshir. The Leaf Bunny. Look at this cute little guy. What is he going to teach us? Incisor, which is just a one and a half times damage on physical. So it is what it is. He does absorb ice, so like that's a thing. The Naughty. This guy is World of Ruin Narsh Cave, and he will use stone, which again could be really useful if you set it up properly, but that's a lot of extra prep to have happen. He also comes with Protect, so that's something. The Kamui, you will find him in Zone Eater. He will also teach you Snowstorm. And then the Iron Fist, this guy is also found between Jador and the Opera House. He will also use Stone, because everything just wants to start chucking stones in this section. I didn't do this, I promise I didn't do this on purpose, it just kind of is happening. The Imperial Soldier, found in the Imperial Camp for the Imperial Army, because he's Imperial. He will teach Fire. So on your first Vel trip, he is your first access to fire. That being said, we're gonna have a whole lot better options later on, trust me. Ilyonkis, this boy will teach you Gigavolt. Gigavolt is the one that you want, by the way, because it hits so much stronger than Megavolt, so it's not terrible. We're also gonna have an earlier Gigavolt pickup as well. The Hunting Hound, only found on the Narsh Snowfield when you're doing the Kefka Narsh section in the World of Balance. He uses Bite, one and a half times damage. Not that amazing. Hornet, going through the South Figaro Cave. Found nice and early, he will use a move called the Iron Stinger. Uh, just a physical damage of one and a half times. Then we have the Hell's Rider. He is the big boss kind of before Kefka, the actual big boss on the Kefka Narsh section. And he will use Venomist. 
which is kind of underwhelming. The guard, the first enemy in the game, as per the bestiary, will use a move called critical, which if it wasn't obvious enough, it just is critical damage one and a half times. That's cool. General, found in the Magitech factory, will use Kira. This is kind of our like earliest chance to get Kira, but there is also some better options down the road as well. The Fossil Dragon. I know him to be found in the desert just by the Imperial camp. I'm not exactly sure what the buttons actually are here that are showing us on this map. But that's where I know where to find him. He will use Sandstorm, which is not unamazing. It's just not amazing. And here we have the Flan, found in the Magitech factory. He starts with Reflect. He's also immune to one, two, three, four, five different elements. He is weak to fire though, but unless something is using a move like Merton or Meltdown or something that ignores that reflect, he might be kind of safe. So other than the fact that he doesn't really do anything, I guess he could just be like an elemental tank. Oh, who's a good puppy? Fidor is a good puppy. Found on the Narsh snowfields in the World of Balance doing the Kefka Narsh section, he will use Pounce which is actually at times two damage for physical. So that's a little bit stronger. Then we have Fafnir. Fafnir. Just found in the opening content as you get off of the isolation island and he will use Traveler. Not much else to say about that boy. Exocyte. You will find this guy on the Leet River and he will use Pinsir, just some more one and a half times damage. Dark Wind, found beside our cute little bunny boy. Right at the beginning of the game, he will use Break. Kind of a weird thing for him to cast right off the hop, but essentially you can get your petrification spell like right off the hop, which is kind of funny. Ooh, look at Coco, found in Dreamscape. She will use a move called Overture, which makes one target cover for the user. I've never used this. I've never even seen this actually get used aside from when I think Goddess will use it on your party. I'm not entirely sure on that. I've really never seen this move be used at all, and so that's what it does. I'm reading it verbatim. Cartagra, you'll find this lock scenario going through the South Figaro cave, and he will use Poison Barb. Spoilers, it poisons. Caladrius, this guy is found walking through Alzer's mansion. Alzer's got a lot of stuff in his mansion. He really needs to, to get something going on in there, but this thing also does acid rain. Not a lot of protections at all, so it's kind of, it just is what it is. Alacran, these guys can be a bit of a dick if you're going through the first time through Figaro Desert, but he gives numb, which should just be a stop spell. Apiornis, holy moly, how many, t you guys can make fun of all of my pronunciations all the way through this. If you take the time to watch this and listen to it, make fun of all my pronunciations. This guy will use Feather Dust, which is a bit of an interesting move, or at least you would think. It sounds really cool. It actually just inflicts poison. That's all it is. Sounds cool, though. The Black Dragon. You'll find him in the World of Ruin, walking on your way to Kolingan. You'll also find him on the Isolation. You'll also find him on the Isolation Island, uh, just with Celeste by yourself. So that's kind of scary. Uh, he'll use Snowstorm, because that makes sense to use when you're inside of a desert. The Sprinter. I believe this guy uses Arrow, which is actually our first thing that we've seen that can use something really powerful. Arrow's a really good spell, but he just comes in way, way too late for it to be super worth it. We have the Moon Form. This boy is found in Haydn's Cave. And he will also use Flash Rain, which we realize is actually not that strong of a spell, but it is a cool spell to have. Perusa, this is found in, this is found on Thamasa Island in the world of Ruin. And he'll use Rock Slide, which is actually a pretty okay spell. Takes a long time to go and get there and get it, but it, it's a pretty okay spell to have. Ouroboros. You'll find this guy Phoenix Cave, and he will use Quake. So Quake, I believe, hits everybody on screen, so make sure that you are protected before you use it. The Purple Magna Rotor, found in the Magitech factory, We'll use Bio, which isn't a terrible spell, considering that Bio is tier two poison and there only is two poison tiers. Not bad. Gorgamera, found in the Velt Cave. And he will use Avalanche. Avalanche is a little bit stronger than Snowstorm from what I understand. It hits all target with a heavy ice elemental damage. It doesn't actually give me any uh, power or anything, but we're just gonna have to hope that I'm right and it is stronger than Snowstorm. Deal? Deal. Briarius, found in the Thamasa Island, World of Balance. 
And he will use Cyclonic, which again is just that 1 16th HP left shenanigans. Tyrannosaur. This guy uses Meteor, which is kind of a shame, because if he used Bite, it would be times 7 damage. But it, it isn't Bite, it's Meteor, which is still like cool, but that times 7 damage would be so sick. Yo, Jimbo, found in Kefka's Tower. Uh, this guy is probably one of your best bets to get Shock, and he has a decent amount of protection, not so much to elements, but to status ailments. Hail Gigas, found in World of Balance, Zozo. He will use Magnitude 8, which is not terrible. Not great, but not terrible. It has a spell power of 100, which is pretty strong, but it's Earth Elemental, which I mean, which I think means that if anything is floating, it's not gonna hit. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm open to all these things. I'm kind of just saying things at this point sometimes. The Al Jabber found in Dreamscape. He will teach you Thundaga, but by that point, we should probably have Thundaga. Zagrum going through Mount Colts for the first time. He will use Stone. We also initially start with this, so we don't even have to go looking for it. The fact that he initially starts with it is kind of why he's up this high. And that is it for our C tier. Let's move on to the Bs. Now we're gonna start getting into some juicier stuff. On the B rank, we start off with the Harvester, found in Zozo, World of Balance. He will teach Haste. This is probably one of our earlier chances to get Haste. There's actually something super broken later on, but this isn't terrible. For some reason, he has Float, which still is a little confusing to me. Then we have the Parasite in Dreamscape, World of Ruin. He starts off with Gigavolt, which is the better of the two volts. Corporal, you'll fight this guy on the Narsh Snowfields in the World of Balance before you get to Kefka. He will use Swing, which is a times two damage. Not bad for physical, I suppose. Killer Mantis, you will find this guy on your way up to the Phoenix Cave just on the ground. Uh, this guy will use Metal Cutter. This is a non-elemental magic damage attack to one or all targets with a spell power of 120 and a hit rate of 120. That's actually pretty decently strong. You just get it a little bit late in the game, but it's pretty cool. The Grenade. You can also find him in the Burning House or in the Bomb Forest. He has a chance for us to get Blaze. Not a terrible spell, but we also have a much easier one to get early, early on. The Grass Worm. Found just around the Vector area, just on that whole continent. He will use Berserk because every single one of these types of enemies have something that have to do with Berserk. Then the Chippy Rabbit. He's basically a leafer that's on crack. And you'll find him also around the Grenade Forest. He will use Rays. So hopefully he casts them on people that actually need Rays casted on them. I don't know how the AI actually works for it or how smart it is. If you had two people dead, would it cast it on the one person that's alive? I don't really know. I would never use this. Brain Pan, found on Floating Continent. He will teach us 1,000 Needles, which isn't terrible at this point in time, but it's also not great. Belmadar, found right when we get to South Figaro. Uh, he teaches Megavolt. This is the weaker version of it, but it is a chance to get it. He is immune to Petrify Slow Stop, and he does absorb lightning. So he's kind of useful for right off the hop. Aspidochilon. Espidochalon? Holy moly, who comes up with these names? Uh, he is found just around the... He is found inside Haydn's cave, and he will teach Landslide. Landslide is the earth elemental damage with a, set of, with a spell power of 75. It is essentially the earth version of Avalanche. Ninjas, the bane of my existence, found on floating continent. Uh, this is our chance to use water scrolls without actually using water scrolls, so that's cool. Lunatus. This boy is found in the Figaro basement, and he will use Meteor, probably one of our earliest chances to get Meteor. I don't particularly remember the later on stuff, but this is a chance to get Meteor early, which is kind of sick. Warlock, found in Hydon's cave as well, and he will use Holy. Somewhat easy to get, but also not that easy to get, because you have to get Realm to get Strago so you can go there, so it's just a whole thing. Gigantos, big ol' physical boy, found on floating continent. He uses Magnitude 8. Sure, Test Rider. This boy is found in the Narsh Caves of World of Ruin, and he will use Flash Rain. That's also cool, I guess. We have all these options for Flash Rain. If only Strago had these options. I'm still mad about this. The Twin Scythe. He is found in the Velt Cave. 
and he will use Metal Cutter, which we've gone over is actually a pretty decent physical spell. Physical spell? It's kind of a physical spell. Let's let's get real with it. The Anemone, found in Narsh Caves as well. And it will use Gigavolt. Again, for a reminder, that's the Good Volt spell. Schmidt, found in Dreamskate. He will use Mega Berserk. I don't even know if this spell existed, if I'm gonna be perfectly honest. This is a Berserk All, which is kind of cool. I don't know when you'd actually ever use this, but it's cool it exists. Then we have the Chaser. He is found as you were leaving Magitech Factory, and he will use Plasma. Plasma is the lightning elemental damage to a single target. Uh, we also get it from Water Rondo and a couple of other dances. It's an okay spell. Then we have the Oversoul, found on the train in Sabin Scenario. He will teach Will of the Wisp, which is a fire elemental spell. Single target, not terrible. Angua Form. This boy nukes us down with Aqua Breath, so it makes sense that he teaches us Aqua Breath. He also starts with Darkness, so that's kind of cool. The Lesser Lopros, found on Leet River. These guys actually use Fireball. Fireball is just a fire elemental damage with a spell power of 50, so it's not particularly strong, but it has a hit rate of 150, so it's pretty much always going to hit. The Antares, found in the Sealed Cave as well. They teach you Magnitude 8. I don't know what sort of earthquakes these guys are going to create, but you know what? All the power to these little guys. The Behemoth King, I believe it's only the living version, will teach Fyraga. It, they just separate between the living and the dead version, or the undead version, because they needed to or something, I don't know. Baelzefawn, uh, this guy is found in Zone Eater, and he is our chance to learn Blizzaga. This guy absorbs a lot of stuff, so there is something to him for, for what it's worth. The Devil, this guy is found in Figaro Basement, I knew! Edgar was keeping something weird down there. Uh, this is our chance to get Thundaga, and that's that's pretty much all you really want him for. Marcosius, uh, found just outside Kalingan in the World of Ruin. He will use Arrow, kind of an early Arrow, not quite early, but we're getting earlier at least. Borghese, he is found in Daryl's Tomb, and he will use Holy, so we can actually get Holy before we even get the airship technically, or access to it at the very least. Behemoth found on the floating continent. This guy will use Meteor. Now that is an early Meteor, if I do say so myself. As soon as you get Gal in the World of Ruin, bing bang boom. Actually, so I have it listed for different segments, which we talked about early on, but you could leave right now, get Gal to learn Meteor, and, and then he'd have it. And we got the Peepers. These guys literally just die by existing. Found on the Isolation Triangle. They use White Wind. So that's pretty cool. Wyvern, found just on the southern continent of the World of Balance. They are another Cyclonic, because look at them. They're that exact same enemy. The only one that hasn't actually done that is the Lesser Lopros, now that I think about it. Cloud, found on the Phantom Train. He will use Thundara. So this is, we have a chance to get Thundara on our first trip, so that's actually not bad. And he's actually immune to a lot of things that are instant death. The Guard Leader, literally a boss that you have to fight in the Save Terrace situation and he will give you Wind Slash. Not a terrible spell, but not a great one either. Magic Urn. This thing absorbs literally everything, and it uses Kiraga. The only reason it's as late as it is is because of how late in the game it is, but if you wanted a tank that didn't take any magical damage aside from non-elemental, this would be the one that you want to go with. It actually gets a whole lot of protections from like pretty much everything. Gorgeous, found on Mount Colts. He will teach Snowstorm. And then we have the Aspirin, found in the Leap. He is found in, he is found in the Trench. And he is our early chance to get Gigavolt. This is where we actually get like the very good versions of it. And then we have, I think this is Io, not low, but Io found in Dreamscape and he teaches Flare Star. Now, Flare Star deals an amount of damage to all targets equal to the level of one random target times 80 divided by the number of targets. I know that is one heck of a calculation, but it is what it is. It is Fire Elemental, is unblockable, and it ignores defense and split damage. Pretty good spell. That is why these past three, I could have put into A, I just didn't feel like they were quite A material, but they are all pretty good. Like, we're getting into the good stuff now. These past three are actually pretty good. I just didn't want to put them into A, because it's kind of like, what are the real, like, quote-unquote, top tens? 
But don't sleep on these past three at the very least. So I lied, it's not actually a top 10, it's actually a top 14. But starting off that top 14 is a Foper. Literally a South Figaro cave enemy, and it teaches death. We can literally get death on our first trip, which is actually not terrible. With the Unseelie, also found just as you're leaving the South Figaro cave, this guy uses Shell, and he starts with Haste, he also starts with Poison, but he starts with Haste. So you'll have a thing with Haste that is casting Shell, and there, this is your earliest chance to just really negate some magical spells, so that's actually pretty good. The Bomb that you find on Phantom Train, first chance of getting Blaze, also pretty good. He also absorbs fire, and he starts with float, and he's also immune to a few things. We're gonna start really breaking these down a little bit more as we get further along. The Destroyer, found in Magitech Factory. He has re-raise, and absorbs lightning, and he starts with protect, and he's immune to petrify, death, and doom. This dude is literally like, I shall not die, and I'm gonna make sure that you don't either. What a chad. The Cloud Wraith, this is quite a bit later in the game, this is probably one of my only late ones in the game. You find them in Daryl's tomb, but this is this is our chance to get Flare right here, right now. You can get Flare with Gao before you get your airship, technically. If you could actually get Gao, like as soon as you get your airship, you can get Gao. You can get Flare, and he's immune to all of these things because he's already undead. The only downside is he's weak to fire and holy because he's undead, but he also absorbs poison, so that's pretty cool. The Land Ray. You'll find him on Isolation Island. You can also find him on the first continent as you're making your way through after saving Sid, or killing Sid, whatever you ended up doing. This is your chance for Gao to have Mighty Guard, which is pretty sick. It's Mighty Guard 50-50 shot that he actually does it, but other than the fact that this guy starts with Sap and he is weak to water, he does have Protect, and he is immune to Petrify, Doom, Sleep, Imp, Darkness, a whole bunch of cool little things. Really good protection. The Litwar Chicken, or better known as Chicken Lips. Uh, you will find him just outside the Vector area, and this is the easiest chance for you to get Quake. If you get a whole bunch of Gaia armors, or Gaia gears, in Thamasa, throwing this guy on there, you can get some pretty decent damage right off the hop. He is weak to ice, so you need to pay attention to that, but he is also immune to death, doom, and petrify, which is kind of nice for not having to worry about him instantly dying. And Yuo, found in the Figaro basement. Another World of Ruin one, but this is your chance to get Tsunami. Uh, this means that you also don't need to go looking around for Tsunami too much when you actually get Struggle, because you can just use this as well. He will only use Tsunami if you're going for the lore, if he's by himself. So, if you want to avoid all that, Bing bang boom, you can get this. He is weak to holy, because he is not really undead, but if you look at him, he looks pretty undead. I know it says it isn't, but he kind of is. He also has Reflect, so that's another thing that kind of protects him a little bit. The Templar in the... The Templar in the Imperial Camp. My boy here is our chance to get Fyra. You can get Fyra the first time you go to the Velt, if you find the Templar. He starts with Protect. Uh, he is weak to poison, but there's not a lot, a lot of poison you need to worry about. So, tier 2 spells, first time you actually get Gao. Pretty sick. The Ghost that you find in Sabbath Scenario as well. He will teach you Thundara. So, between these two, we now have Fyra, we have Thundara. You have him undead, so he is weak to fire and he is weak to holy, but he absorbs poison. He is floating, so he doesn't get hit by anything on the ground at all. And because he's undead, getting hit by zombie is not going to do anything to him. He's also immune to a few other things that's pretty nice as well. The Trillium that you find on Mount Colts. Typically, he only uses Poison Touch. This boy gives you Bio! So now, first time we go to the Velt, we're gonna have Thundara, we're gonna have Fyra, and we're gonna have Bio. He is weak to fire, but he also absorbs water. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Not a lot of protections, but it's also a really, really early game fight, so it kind of makes sense. The Spritzer. This one really actually surprised me. This guy is found the first time you go through the Narsh Caves. And this guy teaches you Blaze. And he also absorbs lightning. I think he's a little bit better than the bomb just for the, the chance that he uses. I think he's a little bit better than the bomb just for the fact that he absorbs lightning. And I feel like you see lightning a little bit more than fire. It's kind of dependent on which one actually goes where. It's also undead, so you can kind of use him situationally for whatever is actually happening in whatever fight you're using them in. The Serprius. This dude, I had no idea. This guy cast Haska. So, when you go to the Velt, 
you can find a thing that I'll just cast a haste all, which hits haste on all of your party. So even if Gao doesn't really do anything else past that point, your entire party can have haste and your other three characters could just go absolutely crazy. And because we need to do one extra tier for it, nobody is surprised by this one. We have Stray Cat, we have Cat Scratch. There you go. Cat Scratch is just too, too good. In case you're wondering what Cat Scratch does, Cat Scratch is just a times four damage. If you can put them together with like an offering or whatever else, you can just get four of them. That's a lot of damage. Anyways, cue the meme. Thank you guys for coming through. It's time to head to the outro. I need to rest my voice after doing all these voiceovers. We're not gonna do any super long list like this ever again. Holy moly. So there it is. The list is done. The meme is finished. How do we feel about it? Are you particularly enraged about a particular placement of a rage? How come? I only have a couple more lists in mind for Final Fantasy VI before we move on to different projects. Or just have fun dabbling in other games, who knows? Thank you so much for watching. 11 billion internet points to those who watched it front to back. Let me know if you were one of them, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I need a hot shower and a very, very cold beverage after this one.